Today we're going to talk about movies and the power of movies. How a good movie like Goodwill Hunting or Jerry Maguire can literally go in and break into your soul, touch the emotional strings of your life and really wrench it from you and make you truly believe that what they're telling you or showing you in this motion picture is something that you can identify with. Truly great films like that only come along once a decade. Today, I had the chance to see one of those films. The new Ben Affleck directed Air, the story of Michael Jordan. Matt Damon stars as Sonny Vaccaro, the low-level executive at Nike who convinces Phil Knight, who's played by Ben Affleck also, as the director and star. Truly an amazing portrayal. Phil Knight's Buddhist aphorism laced character is somewhat of an enigma within Nike even, but Sonny Vaccaro seems to be able to penetrate Phil Knight and tell him and convince him that in 1984 he should risk everything, his entire budget, on basketball, which was at that time $250,000 on one rookie. He tells Phil, this is the person I want you to take all your money and put it on one instead of three or four different drafts um, that are coming up in the NBA. And Phil looks at him and says, you want me to bet everything on one player who's never stepped foot on the NBA court yet? And F Matt Damon's Sonny Vaccaro says, that's exactly what the definition of a rookie is. And it's those type of moments throughout the film that just make you laugh at, at one cry uh, or at one moment and the next you're crying and tears are coming from Viola Davis who plays Michael Jordan's mother, Mrs. Jordan, in an Academy Award winning performance, no doubt. Her power on the screen is magnetic. You're drawn into her um, and you truly believe, you know, she is truly looking out for the best interests of Michael and knows that he's a born superstar and wants to capitalize on that and goes after percentage for the first time in the history of sports apparel. The woman behind Michael Jordan, his mom, actually says, I want a percentage of the gross profits of the Air Jordan. She wins that war, by the way, and you'll see the film, but no spoiler alert here. Uh, Matt Damon, again, gives an outstanding performance. He's at the peak of his life in acting. Um, the character is so believable. He's gained 40 pounds um, and walks around. And it's 1984, remember? So, you, you know, the dress was eh, not, that, not that slick. Um, but he plays this character to the hilt and gives a soliloquy in the pitch room of Nike when they have Michael Jordan and his parents, mom and dad, in the room and just stops the video of the Nike um, promotion they're showing and says, and just speaks to their heart. And at that moment, you know, you've come upon one of the truly great films of the decade um, because you are literally in tears. Your emotions are just coming out of you like crazy. It's um, it's an amazing, amazing film. I would encourage everyone to go and see this film. If you want to feel your emotional heartstrings being pulled and pushed every which way and laughing one minute, crying the next, this is a movie you want to see. And you want to see it in a theater. Um, the big screen can never be replaced. Let's face it, I watch thousands of films on Netflix, but when I truly want to experience a film, I go to the theater. And it's something that's never going to go away but there's nothing that can ever replace the theater. The theater is the place where you immerse yourself in the sound and just the focus of that big screen in front of you. And, you know, I'm going to go back and see it again and again, I'm sure. But that's normal for me when I like something like that. I'll watch Jerry Maguire. I've probably watched it 10 times and Goodwill Hunting six or seven times. And so, you know, go out and see this film, do yourself a favor, enjoy yourself and just let it take you away because it has that power to do that. And the power of movies are just undeniable in terms of what they can do for your overall disposition, your demeanor, and make you feel good. So this is a story of an underdog, um, Sonny Vaccaro, who comes 
and rises to the top. And, you know, Phil Knight makes a comment in the thing. He goes, well, we'll give him a percentage. He goes, what's the most the shoe's ever made? It was $3 million in 1984. In, in 1984, in the first year of the Air Jordan, it made $162 million. <laughs> so it was so far over what Nike had ever seen. He literally took the company of Nike and he became, you know, the symbol, the motto, the brand, everything. And to this day, Michael Jordan reaps about $400 million a year passively from his Nike deal that his mother insisted on in 1984. Uh, so Some other great players, but Viola Davis is just, oh, so powerful and so moving with her portrayal of Mrs. Jordan, Michael's mom, in this movie and her power and her steadfastness to always be looking out what was good for Michael. And that's all she ultimately wanted. But she went after an unprecedented deal at the time. No, Nobody had ever shared um, gross revenue or receipts or sales with an athlete before. And she insisted that Michael would benefit from Air Jordan. And she saw the future, you know, long before many people. And she was a truly great woman. She's still alive in Chicago. Um, so this is, um, my passion in life, watching movies. I've been, you know, I worked in the film and industry in 1976 in Hollywood. I spent about eight years out there working in film and television and worked on some feature films some documentaries um, and have had a passion for movies in my entire life. I remember being 1976 at the uh, producer's house at Paramount Pictures that I was working for in 1976, uh, Gary Allison. Um, and we were working on a film called Fraternity Row, but that year is the year that Rocky won Best Picture. And I remember sitting in his living room and it was just the quintessential underdog story of a man who wrote a script and refused to let anyone else star in it but himself. That was still, obviously, Sylvester Stallone. And then went on to win you know, Best Picture at the Academy Awards. And it gave me a sense of, you know, the Hollywood was something more than it was at the time. Um, and I believed in these dreams. And so I went after some of those dreams when I was young. You're kidding me. No, man. Now, I talked to James, Michael Daddy today. That's what he told me. And uh, I don't think he accepted it yet, though. So we might still have time. That's why I wanted to give you the heads up. Maybe make some moves. Uh, no, move. I mean... This is, oh, Chris, Chris Turner is is just phenomenal <laughs> um, and you just can't miss this film so please make sure you go and see this film in a big theater don't see it on Netflix see it in a big theater go immerse yourself and just have a wonderful afternoon and bravo to the team who did this Ben Affleck Matt Damon you guys are just rocking it um, again one of my favorite films was Good Will Hunting um, and that was a few years ago <laughs> but um, you know Take the opportunity, go see this film, do yourself a favor. She's unbelievable. She's right now, she takes over two jobs. She's an unbelievable woman. She constantly keeps me focused on the good things about life. You know, how people perceive you, how you respect them, you know, what's good for the kids. It all came from my parents, you know, it came from my mom. And she's still at this stage, I'm 46 years old, she's still parenting me today. And that's a good thing about that lady. I love her to death. I love her.